What is up birdie? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So you guys have been requesting a SketchUp tutorial. On today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you the very basics of SketchUp. So this video is for those of you who have never ever opened SketchUp in your entire life, or for those of you who have used SketchUp in the past, but do not quite well remember all the basics of this program. As a warning guys, this is very, very beginner, like absolute complete beginner sketch tutorial. So bear with me if I'm going a little bit too slow. It's for those of you who have really no clue about this program whatsoever. So let's get right into it. So the first time that you open SketchUp, you will see this window. Here you have your templates that you can use. You can use a template with the sky in the background or you can use one with like a very light brownish grayish color in the background. I typically just use the sky one, I think it's nicer. Here you will have the files that you've worked on if there's anything that you've opened before and you can make either of these templates your favorite one. I always like to keep it here in the simple inches because this is the template that I always use. So you can work with imperial units, you can also work with metric units. Simple or architectural, there's not really a huge difference in it. If you're just learning how to work with this SketchUp and if it's your first time opening the software, then I would just say, just go with the simple. If you go to the Learn tab, you will see that there are the SketchUp forum, campus and videos and these ones are for free. I believe they're still for free. These ones are created by SketchUp and are also great tutorials for you to learn about the tools and about the software in general. Here on the bottom, it says licensing. I currently have the SketchUp Studio license, which is like the most complete one. You can go to their website to see what type of licenses they have. And we're just gonna go back to files and we will just click on the simple template. So the first time that you open SketchUp, this is what you will see. Here you have a human figure. It is there so that you can give yourself an idea of the scale. So for example, if you're gonna draw, I don't know, like a coffee table, uh, you gotta make sure that a coffee table would be smaller than this person. I'm not really gonna use it right now, so I'm just gonna click on it and tap delete on my keyboard. Okay, so once you are here, you have selected, we have selected uh, to work with Imperial units. But so let's say that you selected a template and you're not sure, you don't remember if you are working with metric or you're working with Imperial. So the way that you can double check is you gotta go to Window, Model Info and Units. Here it says Format Architectural and it's automatically in inches, so that means this is Imperial units. If you change this to decimal, you can actually change it to meters, okay? Uh, right now we're just gonna keep it architectural and it will go automatically into inches and feet. Now, I told you guys this is a very basic beginner tutorial, so I'm gonna start with the basics. When you are on this screen, the way that you're gonna move around um, within the software is with your mouse. So I forgot to mention, you have to have one of these mouses where it has a wheel and you can actually move inside SketchUp. So the way that you do it is you're gonna click on the wheel, okay? And then you're gonna drag your mouse. When you do that, it's gonna start moving the space. If you click on shift at the same time that you do this, so you click on the wheel, you click shift on your keyboard and then you drag your mouse at the same time, it's gonna start to pan. And then if you use the control key instead, you are going to suspend the gravity. Typically on a normal workflow, you're not gonna be using the suspend gravity option. You're only gonna be orbiting and panning. These tools to move around have this little icon. So the orbit and then the pan. The first thing that I wanna tell you is what is it what you're actually looking on the screen? You're looking at toolbars with tools within them. This is the large tool set bar and these are the tools that you're gonna be using almost for everything. These ones are not all the toolbars that are within SketchUp. If you wanna see the other toolbars, you wanna go to view toolbars and you will see all the toolbars that you can add to your screen. So these ones, you can actually move them around. You can bring this one down. You can actually take them, take them out. You can dock it again. On the right side hand, you have your default tray. You can actually hide it as well. So you wanna go to window default tray. 
and if you go here on this little icon it says auto hide if you click on that it's gonna hide it and whenever you hover your mouse over the fault tray text it's gonna pop up you can actually add or remove trays that are within your default tray. If you hover over each of these tools, it'll tell you the name of the tool. The default tool is always gonna be the select tools. When you choose to work with the line, for example, if you click on the line tool, because you wanna use the line tool, you drag and then you click again. That's a line. I'm not clicking anymore, but the line tool is still active. So there's two ways to disactivate or this select this tool. The first way is you're just gonna click your spacebar on your keyboard and you're gonna go back to the select tool automatically. You can actually just click on the select tool again. So the first tool that I'm gonna show you here is the rectangle tool. You wanna make sure that your camera is positioned as if it's looking downwards, you know, like as if you're a little bit like higher up, because if I decide to create a rectangle right here, it's gonna go uh, vertical and it's gonna be like this. So we're gonna create a rectangle on the ground and the way to do this, like sometimes it works, you know, like right now it's creating it on the ground because it's blue, it's on the blue axis. So it's actually on the ground. Um, but if sometimes it just like changes and you know, you see, so if you put your camera facing downwards, you are making sure that it is gonna be on the ground. You're gonna click anywhere, okay? Then you're gonna, you don't have to keep the click, um, like you don't have to keep holding the wheel, like the click. Uh, so you just click, release the mouse, and then you're gonna move your mouse, you drag it, and then you're gonna click again. Spacebar to go back to the select tool, and there you have a beautiful rectangle. This rectangle, we are gonna make it a box. So the way we do this is we are going to select the push-pull tool, okay? Let's say you wanna erase it. You go to the erase tool and you click on the rectangle. Let's create a rectangle again. And you see how on the bottom you have dimensions? So you can actually set the dimensions for your rectangle and it actually will do it for you automatically. So let's say that we want our rectangle to be 10 feet and then you have to put comma and then 10 feet, okay? And then you click enter and then your rectangle, it's gonna be created automatically. How do you make sure that that's, that is 10 feet? You're gonna go to the tape measure tool. You click on the tape measure tool you click on one of the edge and then you drag, you click on the other one. You don't have to click, actually you only click once and then it'll tell you, even if it's your, you're just hovering over the other corner and it tells you that that is 10 feet. If you click on the line, uh, instead of clicking on the edge, it's actually gonna start creating a guide. So if I do it this way, it'll create another guide. And then this can serve you as like, if let's say I wanna create another rectangle, then I will just guide myself like that. For now, let's just keep it like that. Um, so we're making sure that that is 10 feet and then push pull tool. And then we click, we drag up and we type a dimension because we want this to be 10 feet height. And that is gonna be 10 feet height. Okay guys, so there we have a box, it's 10 by 10 by 10, and I am changing my mind now, and I want that to be 20 feet in length. So you take the push-pull tool, and you just, you already did 10, so you have to do 10 more. And then you're gonna do here 10 more, because I wanna do that, okay? We are going to use the line tool. When you click on a line, and you click on the middle, point of that line, a blue circle is gonna appear. So that means it's exactly the midpoint in this line. Click on that, you drag, you can release the click, you drag and then you click again. Then we're gonna use the move tool. This is the move tool, so you click on it. You're gonna click only on the line. It's gonna go blue, then you click, you can release the click and you're just gonna drag your mouse in an upward position. If you drag not straight up, 
you won't have this dotted blue line. You want to make sure that it's on the blue axis. So you bring it up, 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 and then you're going to type in a distance. So on the bottom, you will see it says distance and let's make this five feet. Okay. Now we're going to use the offset tool. You're going to hover over this edge. And when you see that it says on edge, you're going to click, you can release the mouse, then you're going to drag inside. You're going to type in five inches. It's very important that you use the feet and the inches symbol. So you type in five and then you click enter. So when it's selected like this, you, you see those dots um, within the face. That's because it's selected. When you want to deselect a face, you're going to click anywhere on the screen outside of your geometry. And then you're going to click on the push pull tool again. You already know how to work with that one. And then you're going to pull, pull, pull until don't go all the way because if you go all the way until you see on face, it's going to delete it. So don't do that. So just a little bit before. Now we're going to go back to the tape measure tool and you're going to click on the ground line here on that back wall and you're just going to drag it up. If you drag it up and you don't see the grid line, you have to click uh, control uh, on your keyboard. So I'm clicking control and it'll disappear. If I click control again, I will see the grid line. So you drag it up and then you're going to type in five inches line of the wall, five inches enter. Then you're going to do the same on the other side. And we're just going to create here some uh, windows. So you're going to do five feet, nine inches, enter for that window. Then you're going to do five again, five inches. Then we're going to do six, six feet for the middle window and five inches again. And then from the bottom one, you're just going to go up eight feet enter. You're going to go back to the rectangle tool. The shortcut is R. You're going to click on this intersection. You are going to click on this one in the bottom. You're going to do the same three times. And then you are going to go to the push pull tool. You click on it and then you drag, drag, drag um, backwards. If it's not going that way, then you're going to click on your um, arrows on the on your keyboard to repeat that same action on the other windows you're just gonna hover over this window double click and it'll do exactly the same thing now if this wall is very thick because we pushed it uh, before um, and we kind of like eyeballed it then you're gonna click on the wall and then you're gonna pull it a little bit so that you have a thinner wall. We have all those grid lines showing that we want to get rid of. So the way we do that is we go to edit, delete guides and they will be gone. Okay guys, so now we're going to add some materials to our interior space. So you want to go to materials here. If you don't have this, you already know you got to go to window, um, your tray, and then you're going to select the materials so that it's visible in your default tray. So we are going to click on this drop down menu and I kind of want to do like a concrete thing on the ground. So we're going to go to asphalt and concrete. I like this one. So you click on the material and then it's automatically going to activate the bucket tool, which is what you will paint with or apply the material with. So you're just going to click on the ground and then if you can't really see it, you just have to orbit because sometimes with the light, if you have your, your house like this, you won't be able to distinguish the materials. So right now we're going to add some furniture. So you want to go to window and 3D warehouse. 3D warehouse is somewhere where a lot of people upload furniture and anyone can use this. So it's really great. It has a lot of furniture. It has um sinks toilets like everything that you need so right now you are here on 3d warehouse and you're gonna search for let's say sofa so we're gonna use a sofa this is just an example i just want to show you how to use 
the 3D warehouse. I want to add this sofa on the other side. Click on it, activate the move tool, the shortcut is M. You click on the sofa, you drag, before you click again, you're going to type control. So if you want to rotate this sofa, you are actually going to click on it. So I'm just going to type Q and then this is the tool. This is to rotate stuff. When you see that the protractor tool turns blue, it means that it's on the blue axis. So we want that because we want to rotate it like this. You don't want to rotate it like this or like any other way. You want to just rotate it like this. So if you cannot find the blue axis, you're going to type your arrow, the one that goes up on your keyboard, then it'll be locked on the blue axis automatically. So you're going to click on one corner, you click on the other corner, and then you can just move it to rotate it. You can actually also type the angle at which you want it rotated. So that is it guys. This was my very basic SketchUp tutorial for beginners. Uh, there is a lot of things to cover yet, but this was very basic. If you want additional videos on SketchUp, let me know down in the comments. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. I hope that you found it useful and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.